Hello, everybody. Welcome to room two. Uh, we're here now with uh, Dorina. She has over seven years experience with uh, with digital marketing with Motic for over three years. She works for uh, CRMT Digital. And uh, I would, wel would like to welcome her heartily and say the stage is yours. Go ahead. Okay, so hi everyone and welcome to my seizure. Uh, my name is Dorina. I'm a digital marketing expert with more than seven years of experience and over the last couple of years, I've been focused on technologies that empower marketing automation, especially on Mautic or Equia Campaign Studio. Currently, I work as a digital marketing specialist at CRMT Digital a hybrid marketing operation agency and consultancy, which serves globally known as uh, brands such as Lenovo, HP, Acquia, Equinix, and so on. Um, basically, CRMT helps businesses improve demand generation, customer engagement, and performance uh, by using data, technology, and insights. Throughout my journey as a digital marketing specialist, I've been using Mautic uh, for several years, to support clients executing their marketing efforts. And today I will be going through some best practices for creating uh, scalable campaigns in Mautic. In today's talk, we will review problems that uh, digital marketing ecosystem faces as the business is growing and potential solutions that Mautic can give. More specifically, we will discuss how businesses can scale easily as they enter new market and new regions, uh, what they can do to improve efficiency during execution of their uh, marketing efforts, how to keep consistency and best practices in a global scale, um, how to afford growth without needing additional skill set within the team, and how to keep uh, cross-channel communication consistency by using Mautic as a marketing automation tool. After this session, you'll have a deep understanding about most common growing aspects of businesses uh, and how that affects the digital marketing ecosystem, of course. We will explain what scalability means from production perspective. And finally, how you can get the best of Mautic to support your scaling marketing strategies. So if you are a Mautic user, and you are wondering whether you can rely on this tool as your business grows, then you're lucky because of two things. First, because you have chosen Mautic, and second, because today you'll have the chance to hear uh, best practices for creating scalable campaigns using that. According to research conducted by HubSpot, marketers spend 30% uh, of their time doing repetitive tasks. That is uh, 16 hours per week in a regular um, 14 hours uh, working week. Now, can you imagine how these numbers would look like if your business starts to grow? Scaling marketing activities as your business expense inevitably increases the strain on your team. Planning for this in advance will take away a lot of headache, of course. But to do that, you need to consider the different dimensions of growth and what their implications are. We will see here uh, the first dimensions that we have chosen to talk about today. First of all, you will be expanding into new regions and markets. With that, you will have the need to localize ad set, to look at the segmentation and so on. But handling that at a scale can be a real challenge. Uh, secondly, you will utilize, you'll be utilizing new channels. You want to make sure that the business is visible everywhere your customer and prospects are. But that needs to be managed. And more importantly, you need to have the ability to report this in an easy way. Uh, third, the sheer volume will increase and you will uh, not just have a big database uh, with leads to handle, but that means that you will need to produce um, to qualify those more effectively. And then the volume of campaign requests and personalized assets that uh, you will use to contact those will also increase. 
but you will not necessarily have more people dedicated to manage uh, and deliver these campaigns. We will, show, uh, we will show you soon how to do that and how that is achievable in Multi. And uh, finally, to maintain an edge over your competitors, you will want to make sure of the other technologies that are there. So it's not just about channels. It's also about bringing on board new technologies to support your marketing objectives, your overall objectives. Uh, with all these dimensions of growth, new challenges will arise. So how can we make sure we don't become the enemies of our, our own success? Production team, which obviously holds a big portion of the growing pressure, could possibly when end up with an increased workload, which means more assets to produce, more content to be created, more content to be adopted, and more repetitive tasks. Quality of the overall content and marketing effort might suffer because of this increased workload. Communication then might not be properly organized and may, a, may end up to the wrong audience. Adding more not to that complex communication system might reduce the speed of execution of uh, campaigns. And eventually that could uh, affect the overall return on investment and also increase the costs of um, marketing efforts. So now it's time to think about how can you, you can leverage a marketing automation tool to scale your brand experience and how much simpler it will be if they were all integrated seamlessly together. While it's difficult to eliminate all the production rework, it's possible to leverage marketing automation to keep repetitive talks to a minimum and eliminate steps that actually do not add any value. More importantly, an advanced marketing platform, uh, uh, automation marketing platform as Motic, will offer features that support a true marketing ecosystem to deliver your team to to help your team deliver uh, engaging uh, engaging experiences. Uh, so by now you should be curious to know what are the best practices for creating scalable strategies for marketing users. Okay, let's begin by proposing a solution for the first growing challenge that we mentioned, and that is expansion of audience enhanced regions and markets. Uh, Mautic is quite adaptive when it comes to serving an audience that always tends to grow and brings more def demographic properties with it that you should be adapting to. So, how can you adopt a growing audience? When expanding means entering new markets and new regions, and here is what you can do to adapt with this growth. You can create segments to filter audience based on desired criteria. And you can use them as needed in campaign flows. You can gather, but yet differentiate large set of contacts by filtering both in the creation phase and also during campaign execution phase. Um, the next thing you can do to adopt those global initiatives is to create campaigns that execute at different time zones. So basically, you have the ability to filter contacts from the whole set and reach them at a desired time. In the next slide, I will show concrete examples about how that can be done in Multi. In addition to that, you can create language versions of assets so that everyone gets the message in their own language. And you can do this with all assets like emails, landing pages, and so on. Okay, let's get into a real example of segmentations that we mentioned. So as leads numbers start to increase, you will have more and more demographic and behavioral properties to work with. By demographic property, we refer to the data about who they are. And by behavioral property, we refer to the information collected about what they do. What's their experience with the communication content that you are sending to them? This is an example of segment creation process where apparently we aim to create a set of customers based on their country, field, last date of activity, their interest, and then we want to make sure that we do not interfere with a set of leads such as prospects, which does not belong here. We are assuming for this, um, 
for this example, we are interested to group only customers and then exclude prospects. So you can see the filter uh, in the bottom there, which uh, does that. Now, this segment, which is being created here, will populate based on these filters that you give here. So, um, as your database grows, you might want to add more filtering properties here by doing, uh, and uh, by doing that, the segments uh, will refresh and, uh, of course, will add the leads properly, and uh, the leads there will match the settings that you set here. Data fields, which correspond to contact information, can be also customized in Moti. You can remove and add fields to the database as needed. But uh, the more you add, the more filtering options you have. And uh, you'll have these filtering options, I mean, when creating segments. But uh, just make sure not to add too much and overload with uh, data that are not necessary. And uh, another cool thing about segmentation is that you can change these settings from within the campaign flow. So, for example, if you want to uh, add or remove people into this set, you don't have to come back here and uh, change filters and stuff, but you can do that from within the campaign flow. And um, our next slide will show, will explain how to do that concretely. Here we see an example how campaign flow which is supposed to send an email to a set of leads at morning hours. As shown in diagram, we have a set of contacts. Then we exclude some contacts from this set, which we don't want to receive the specific content. Then we query their location. And then we send the content at their corresponding uh, hours. Um, I want you to pay attention to the filtering step. So, if contact is from EMEA region, that goes to the left. Otherwise, it goes to the right. Uh, it is important to mention that you should be, uh, you should be converting uh, send time to a single time zone. For example, um, I'm using Central European time in my account. So, every time I send emails to United States or Asia, I have to convert their send time to the Central European time and set that here in Moti. In this example, uh, 10 a.m. for USA, it's uh, corresponding to 4 p.m. to my uh, Central European time settings, and that's why I have set it differently here. Of course, there are plenty of steps you can add after that, like uh, synchronization with uh, Salesforce, track the link clicks, opens, and form fields within the campaign, and so on. However, I'm not going to overload this talk now. The purpose here is to understand how we are managing audiences from different time zones into a single campaign. And that reduces a lot of uh, production effort. I hope you notice the jump step here at the bottom as well, which is another cool feature. So if you have a flow, which is the same for both audiences, and you don't want to repeat those steps, you can just use that jump action and uh, it will save a lot of time, obviously. Uh, in addition, what I want to emphasize about this diagram is that Mo uh, in Motic, you can clone this campaign and reuse as many times as you need. You can change segments here at the very top and you can still keep filters uh, into the flow. Um, settings can be even the same if you work. Uh, th those settings will be the same and it doesn't matter how big the audience. It doesn't matter if it is the audience we have right now or it will be 10 times bigger. You can have exactly the same campaign for a wider audience as well. With a good, uh, I mean, with a good planning of uh, growing ambitions, you shouldn't worry about whether Moti can handle that. Then we have an expansion of communication channels. So uh, having more leads means having more diverse contact preferences that your business should adopt to. Uh, because someone would love email, someone will love text messages, 
some contacts would prefer to visit your sites, your landing pages, or uh, participate into events that you organize and so on. The good thing about this is that uh, you can manage all these communications uh, channels, I mean communication channels from within Moti. That means that you can create content for each of one, uh, each channel and create one campaign to manage those all. So for example, you can create content for email, landing page, uh, events, um, social channels, messages, uh, everything can be created from within uh, Motic by using messages channel. Uh, furthermore, by using dynamic features, you can also create uh, variations of your content within a single asset, as this will save a lot of time and efforts when it comes to creating cross-channel content. I will talk a bit about dynamic content later on. Uh, what I love the most about this is that even though businesses grow and tend to use more and more channels to adopt the audience preferences, is that they still have a single platform to track and report activity of each channel. Mautic offers quite a detailed reporting capabilities, by the way. And uh, in the following slide, I will show an example how a landing page is created and managed within Mautic, uh, but also linked to other assets. So, imagine you have a set of leads that you would like to invite to an online event. Often webinars are a bit more complicated in terms of production work required because they tie a lot of components together in order to make it happen. You start by communicating the event, probably in social media channels, emails, and so on. Then you will create a page where uh, interested people can register. After registration, obviously, you would like to reach the customer and confirm their registration via email. But after that, you want to make sure that finding links and accessing the event is as easy as possible for the registrant. But does that have to be complicated when you have a huge database of leads? Well, with Mautic, it shouldn't be. You can track the contact, re, uh, contact registration stages and place the right message on every channel that they will access. In this example here, I'm showing how a landing page can be personalized. You can notice here within the text that we are using a personal URL as well as an email. So regardless if this page is going to be opened by 10 people, or thousands, the page will still be personalized and include the unique data for everyone, like the unique URL to access and the unique email. Whatever data has been recorded about a certain contact, you can fetch those via tokens in pages, in emails, and more. Seeing this from tracking perspective means that you will have a complete picture of the contact journey into a single platform. Okay, so far we talked about expansion of audience and regions, expansion of communication channels, but have you thought what uh, these growing dimensions have in common? Basically, you need to create more content for all of this. Remember when we said that production team will suffer the expansion? Well, with Motive they won't <laughs> uh, because we mentioned that scalable marketing strategies uh, require massive production and reproduction of assets, but you can do some tricks to reduce repetitive tasks. And that is, for assets, you can create your own themes with static structure and blocks of contents that can be reused during production step. You can build this structure using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Uh, of course, it will add some branding, styling, and stuff. But then you can upload these uh, themes into Mautic and uploading them is as easy as a file upload. Templates are also a smart way of creating reusable assets, which settings you don't want to use globally as in case of themes, but you still want those to be saved and reused as needed. For instance, if you create an email from a theme and you want to add some modifications, 
uh, and reuse those specific modifications in the future, you can save that email as a template and that's it. You can clone and reuse as much as you need. I will show you an example about uh, this scenario in a minute. Uh, what, well, you can do the same with landing pages as well. You can create templates and you can reuse, but you can also create themes for them. I'm pretty sure that as businesses grow their, uh, grow their customer base, they put some scoring models in game. And that's because they need to filter somehow those who take actions on the, uh, their messages from those who don't. But uh, do you think it would become a mess as their customer database grows? I don't think so. Because in Motic, you can set up actions that will always listen to leads behavior. Uh, by combining segment filters and campaign auctions, you can set up processes that will track, will sort, and will stump every important move of your customer. And it can be living there forever, regardless of how big your audience is. It will always listen and handle. In the next slide, I will show an example of how you can produce reusable email templates and moreover, how to add dynamic sections that we can display different content to different people. Uh, here is a list of uh, example emails created and I want you to pay attention to the last two ones. The email which has been created out from a theme is named me uh, named master email template. Now assume that we want to add some specific content tailored for our audience based in UK only. Obviously, we wouldn't like to use this main template and do the same change every time we tend to send an email to UK people. What we can do in this case is that we can clone the main template and apply some changes to the new email and again save it as another separate template. Now we can create uh, emails for both audiences by cloning and using already what we have configured here. Uh, for UK people, you will use tailored template to their properties. And for non-UK people, for example, you have again the similar settings, but with some corresponding uh, changes there. Uh, it is important to mention at this stage that uh, naming convention plays a big role here. Mounting it, uh, in Mautic, you can give uh, assets any name you want. So make sure to follow a convention so that you can always uh, find easily what you're looking for. Now let's add more complexity to this scenario. Assume in UK we have IT and non-IT personas that we want to contact and we want the link in the CTH to have different values for those leads. To solve that, we can create a dynamic button that will display a different text, but also redirect to two different pages. Uh, basically, IT people will receive a link who will redirect them to a blog article with more technical language and content suitable to them. Whereas non-IT people will be redirected to a blog page with a non-technical language. That's uh, logical, right? But for both audience types, you want to create a single email and campaign. Now, all you have to do is create a dynamic button in the email that will do all the magic. So uh, the email can be the same, the campaign to be executed will be the same, only the button will be dynamic and it will redirect audiences to different uh, corresponding pages. Later, if we are interested to know more about the performance of this email, we can still count link clicks of uh, both buttons and opens. Moreover, because we used a single send for two types of audiences, we have all the data collected into a single email report. Now, how cool is that? In uh, Mautic, you can create emails that display different content to different audience, but yet having that into a single asset. So even if your database grows, the same settings are still applicable. And uh, I'm sure the production team would love to hear this. Eventually, as your marketing initiatives expand, 
uh, combining different tools is unavoidable, especially when we are talking about how oh, typically are not common for marketing automation tools. However, you probably want to maintain an edge over your competitors and you will want to make sure of other technologies out there. It's not just about channels, it's also about bringing on board new technologies to support your marketing objectives. With multi-inclusion of the new tools, it's not complicated. First, you have a huge list of plugins. There are more than 3,000 available that can only enhance your experience of serving customers. We will not, uh, not uh, talk about each plugin individually, but you can look at uh, you can have a look at their official website and see what's available there. Uh, to name a few here, I um, you can incorporate plugins like HubSpot, Salesforce, GoToMeeting, Eventbrite, Slack, Drift, Shopify, uh, WooCommerce, and so on. Most of these tools are easy to configure and put to work. But what's even cooler about Motic is that it is API-driven platforms. And that means that you can build plugins to meet your very specific business uh, needs. If one of those plugins available fulfills your requirements, then you can, uh, it, I mean, if available plugins do not fulfill your requirements, you can create your own. Uh, Motic is written also in PHP, uh, which is a widely known framework. So I'm sure you won't struggle to find the best creators out there. OK, to summarize, today we talked about challenges that digital marketing ecosystem encounters as the business grows. We discussed the most common growth dimensions in order to understand what the origin uh, of the complexity is. And we highlight, highlighted four uh, expansion directions. We illustrated how to keep communication decent, uh, how to keep a, a decent consistency, efficiency, and quality uh, in Motic without increasing the pressure to the production team or needing additional support. Because basically, having a decent scalability strategy is about finding and creating the right balance between activities and production. Then we shared best practices about how those can be achieved by using Motic as a marketing automation tool. Unfortunately, many marketers struggle to measure their programs and sometimes investing in huge marketing automation tools and then not using them efficiently causes more loss than benefits. So if you are a Motic user and you are wondering whether you can rely on this tool, I hope some of our suggestions will help you out planning your growth. We share tips about how to manage audience as it expands into new regions and markets. And basically that was through proper segmenting and reaching through campaign flows. Uh, we share best practices about how to deal with different communication channels. And we explain uh, the ease you have when all the channels are configured within a single system. We talked about asset management and um, smart reproduction when a huge set of people is expecting to receive your content. But this is not everything you can do with Motic. It's much more indeed. An important aspect which um, is always in interest for business is the financial perspective. And uh, Motic is affordable in that aspect as well. Uh, with Motic, you don't have to pay everything at once. Uh, despite the expensive subscriptions that our other vendors offer, with Motic, you can uh, pay as you go. So you can buy new plugins and features whenever you feel is the right time to incorporate those into your business. But as an open, um, open source platform, Multic comes with minimal or no cost, but with plenty of features to explore. Its developers are spread globally and contributing to enhance futures of uh, this amazing platform. For example, if you decide to expand marketing strategies, you can ask for an in increased server performance. Uh, similarly, you can uh, upgrade the services that are coming for your email service provider without having to make additional configuration on Mautic. 
sorry. So uh, this is my talk. Um, now is the question uh, part, but please do not forget that you can reach me anytime you want using my email addresses below. And you can also reach me through LinkedIn. Thanks a lot, uh, Darina. Right on time. Very punctual. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, we have several uh, questions. Uh, first uh, of all, uh, there are some mentions. Great presentation. So uh, <laughs> that's for you. Um, Thank you. And, um, uh, Martin has a question. You uh, mentioned several plugins that are available. Well, not several, lots of plugins. Yeah. Um, it says on the marketplace you can only find a handful. Um, where can you find uh, plugins for, for Matic? Um, well, I have to answer by Googling. <laughs> so uh, if you uh, ask Google about Mautic plugins, you will find several plagi uh, pages, uh, some of their like private hold and uh, where you can find plugins and download. But uh, what we know is there are more than 3000 available where you can choose from. And if none of those fits your business needs, which <laughs> I'm not sure about that, but uh, you can develop your own plugins as well, because Mautic is written in PHP and that is a widely known language. And you can also find tutorials about how to do that online. Thanks. So basically you say, don't only trust the marketplace, but also Google and uh, search the web. Yeah, I also yeah. know that there are a lot of GitHub repositories there for the more technical people with uh, developers that share uh, their code and what they invented. So yeah. I yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I don't want to mention stores and uh, because of advertising, I don't want to mention any naming here, but if you Google, I'm pretty sure you will find thousands of solutions there. I mean, hundreds. Thanks. Um, there are several more uh, by, uh, let me scroll through the chat. Uh, what would be the best practice for making updates to live or active campaigns? Uh, so uh, while the campaign is live, uh, of course, you plan everything in advance. So usually we don't uh, expect to change those things on the flow. But uh, if that's kind of a major update that you would like to make, like change the audience entirely or change the email copy, maybe you can stop that campaign clone that like reproduce and then make sure that all the steps are set as you want and then run that campaign but again if you want to make changes during the flow uh be sure i mean you should be aware that you can only make changes to um, the flow that uh, it's underneath about the uh, in to the execution so the execution of campaign starts from the top and goes to the bottom of course if that's something that you can um, it's a campaign that you want it to be repetitive there is a setting that allows you to uh, allow contacts to repeat the content so for example if you have a gated asset that you would like to send vertically you can allow contacts to restart the campaign and uh, you can change the settings along the way and contacts will again go on the top of the flow and then go below that. So if you have big changes, uh, you stop the campaign and uh, duplicate it and pick, uh, pick it up from where you left. And for example, small changes like spelling mistakes, uh, is it all right to, uh, to do? Can you do that with Mautic? Uh, yes, that can be done. So you can uh, change uh, assets for their life. And uh, if that is, for example, if you change an email which hasn't been sent already, you can change it in advance. Just make sure not to mistake the second time. All right. Thanks. Yeah, clear answer. Um, so from Jamie, he thanks you for the presentation. Uh, and he asks, how did you identify what would be appropriate, what we, would be an appropriate template uh, for the segmentations to build? Uh, so, first you understand the data, it is well populated and usable or not. Ensure that the fields are relevant. Will this, uh, this help us to identify the right audience at the right time or not? So, context is important. So, as is how you will actually use that data. So be context aware. 
learn. Yeah. Um, all right, there's another one by uh, Charlotte. Um, she, she asks, uh, how do you manage unexpe unexpected demands? Um, she didn't give me an example. Maybe Charlotte in the chat, you can, uh, can, can give an example. Uh, can you can you please repeat the question? How to manage uh, unexpected, unexpected demands? Yeah, always expect the unexpected. Assume the worst case. Main thing is to plan and prepare for scale, not uh, like react and panic. Ensure the upfront work is done to set up your chances for success with the infrastructure, etc. Maybe a bit uh, cryptic, but. Uh... What can we expect from the unexpected? So do you have examples of what, what pop, popped up during a campaign? Um, well, so um, when you, uh, the key to growth is uh, proper planning. So we have explained here like the main dimensions of, of growth. So if you have like increase in uh, demand, for example, increase, uh, that would mean, if that means uh, an increase in content to be delivered, then you can plan your time, you can uh, analyze what you currently have set on place and you can also analyze what should be done for the future. You should then uh, start analyzing the infrastructure and try to reproduce as more, uh, uh, I mean, try to copy as more as you had from the past settings by adding uh, additional values to those, just not uh, to start by creating everything from scratch. So basically reuse current settings and uh, modify them to be, to adopt to the future that is coming into unexpected ways, let's say. All right, um, I have another one, last one in the chat currently. Um, how do you keep your emails fresh and interesting? Well, the use of new unique imaginary, use exciting copywriting, and structure that feels modern and smooth. A good structures, uh, a good structure of telling a story helps a lot. But it's just important to keep your wording and also visual as clean as possible and uh, make it like short, straight to the point. Uh, that's about uh, content. Like uh, always, come with uh, new stuff, up to date, and stuff. Well, they're coming in more and more questions, so. Uh... You're uh, spot on, I believe. Um, uh, Len is asking, uh, what are your thoughts on making sure we don't over communicate uh, when using Mautic? So I think he means uh, email fatigue, right? Do you have any tips for that? Uh, you cannot, um, okay, just, uh, so to make sure you don't over communicate when using Mautic, uh, make sure, um, to have a good communication, uh, I would recommend the following. So first of all is maintain a healthy database. Clean up and format contacts regularly to make sure you are properly identifying and contacting your leads. Uh, once you have a deep understanding of your data, you should be using proper segmentation. For example, do not send uh, marketing people a content that it's relevant to IT people. So in that case, you're not over communicating people. Um, that's what you can do to plan your email performance, but also not to put in risk your communication limit. Uh, in addition to this, there's, uh, there are some uh, technical approaches to manage communication limit, and that comes either from the email service provider, which, which limits your communication of how much you can send per month, per week, uh, but also in Mautic, you can apply settings that will control um, the communication uh, that every contact receives. For example, you can limit how emails per day or per week or per month a contact can receive, and those settings can be done from within Morty. Thanks. Um, we have some additional ones. Um, we have a question about theming, uh, strategies, about missing data, about leads, uh, and segmenting. I think the last one is, is a good bridge from what you said earlier. Uh, uh, Poonan uh, wants to know uh, what 
during a campaign should be done if an error arises. Uh, for example, a segment member gets stuck in the trigger step. Uh, I, I suppose she means when uh, error, like error in executing campaigns or error toward a single contact. For example, if a contact does not receive the, the email, usually these are not the kind of errors that just come up out of the way. There should be some case for that. And uh, if a contact does not receive a certain email, uh, probably that's because of some filtering uh, preventing that. It could be, for example, as I mentioned, the exclusion steps. So if you're sure that you have a contact into the uh, target segment list, uh, uh, th uh, it means the people that you want to receive the content. But if that person exists also into exclusion list because of some of her properties, that means that that specific contact will be excluded. But again, if you want to uh, that contact to receive a specific content, you can do that manually. So in Motic, you can uh, send emails uh, to a single contact directly without uh, uh, putting that contact into a campaign flow. Nice. And can, can you mess up a complete flow? Say you, you, you build your structure, if else, uh, and some, some segment will just, just end and you forgot about it and, and it's running. Um, is it then still possible to say, ah, oh, there are multiple people not uh, not going to the next step, for example? Um, oh, yes, you can add those uh, additional segments into, uh, either you can do that into a later uh, uh, flow steps so that they will start and receive that campaign, which is live. Or you can, if you want to treat those separately, you can create a new campaign and those seg uh, those specific people who haven't done that before will start receiving the content. Thanks. I hope that answers the question. If, if not, uh, please respond in the chat again. Um, yeah. So um, we had some others um, by Martin. He wants some tips on, on setting up a theme. How do you do that? Uh, setting up a theme. OK, so if you want to create a theme uh, specific uh, for your business needs, uh, it will depend if you have a technical team or you would like to find it in the internet. Uh, but uh, there are available pages where you can create an email template. So you just drag and drop the blocks there and then you generate some code uh, out of that. And uh, what you have to do is just add those specific um, div talks that are specific to Mautic. And I'm pretty sure there is a tutorial out there in YouTube that shows how to convert a simple HTML email into a Mautic theme. Uh, if that does not help, uh, the person can reach me uh, via email or LinkedIn, and I will show him concretely how to create a theme out of that. Cool. Thanks, Brina. And I think uh, I always add, don't forget to test all the email clients. There are a lot of tools out there that can do it for you. Yes, obviously. Um, <laughs> Um, so there's another uh, question. Um, uh, you've already told about, a lot about uh, gathering data and it's important to know the context uh, of your data. Um, so what if you have a set of, of leads and uh, for your purposes, you're missing data. What are strategies to, to gain more data about these leads? Uh, so if you have a set of leads into a database and you want somehow to enrich uh, well, what you can do with Mautic is uh, at least use the channels available to kind of nurture those leads and get into your page and to fulfill your forms or uh, somehow get in touch so that you can collect more and more data about those. Or uh, alternatively, you can, uh, I mean, there is also an option to buy um, customer data through, of course, intermediate agencies. But in Mautic, you can use forms and you can use landing pages to track uh, to track leads, to track their behavior, and also gather more data. Uh, but if uh, those are not available, for example, let's assume you don't want to ask a contact too much questions about the 
uh, professional like job title and uh, level what you can do is you can set up uh, settings in Motive that will update a field based on what is known so for example uh, let's say someone as like software developer you will uh, you would add a job title or some category like developer so you can set up uh, campaigns to update the contact field a specific field or let's assume you have a table with contact data, but later on you want to add additional column which, which will refer to additional property. So for example, you have job title, but you're missing job function. And uh, you want to fill this job function of uh, level of management uh, based on the job title that the user has already given. So what you can do is you can set up a procedure that will go through each uh, contact and uh, take the value from the job title and based on that will assign a value to the uh, management level. So you can do that automatically if you have a large set of leads or if these are very specific leads, you can do that manually. It all depends on what kind of uh, situation we are. Cool, thanks. There are also some uh, tips from the audience. Rahul says uh, use, an, use uh, services that enrich your data. So yeah, there's data outside uh, of your model, yeah. of course. Uh, profiles are being built around the world. Yeah, possibly you could integrate this data as well, right? Uh, yes, you can integrate data. As I said, Motic offers uh, a, a really advanced integration, but um, uh, I mean, so far I've been talking about solutions, how to solve these problems within Mautic, but then if it comes to integration, of course, there are, as I mentioned, thousands of tools you can integrate and take data from. So one of the 3000 plugins will help you enrich your data, right? Yeah, we hope so. Cool. <laughs> if Thank not, you, you can build your own. So. We've uh, had a lot of questions. I think, uh, yeah, the audience has very, been very cooperative. Thanks, audience, and thanks, Thank Arena. You. It was a very educational session. I've learned a lot. Um, Thank you very yeah. much. And hereby, I will leave you, and uh, I hope you have a nice conference. Thanks a lot. Thank you, everybody, for joining. And don't forget to get in touch with us if needed, if you have more questions, if you need more explanation, and so on.